What screams I'm poor but pretend I'm rich. My old roommate spent his entire financial aid refund on a Gucci belt because a security guard at the mall assumed he couldn't afford it. Pride is the devil. There is a security guard that works at a popular bar club in my city. He managed to buy an old, yeah, Lambo recently, on the weekends. He will drive by the bar several times before his shift as people are lined up outside revving his engine while at the stoplight. His new thing is pulling onto the sidewalk in front of the bar, parking it, getting out, saying hi to everyone he works with, waiting for people to walk by the car so he can let them know it's his, and then leaving, again revving the engine as loud as possible on the sidewalk. He does this for about 2 hours before his shift starts at 11 or 12 if you have money and can afford nice cars. You do not need to show them off. Naming your children after luxury brands. Couldn't afford a car so she named her daughter Alexis. How my Dominican family fights tooth and nail to give their kids Nike or Adidas before they can even walk. Honest question. Is flashing wealth part of Dominican culture? The reason I ask is because I work with someone who is married to a Dominican and they are constantly in tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt because both of them need to have the latest everything. It's constantly photos on social media of the whole family in new clothes and the latest gadgets. And then she cries at work about not being able to afford the mortgage sometimes. I just don't get it. The reason I ask about the cultural aspect is also because this colleague tells me they send money to the DR all the time so that other family can buy stuff too. Then I always ask why not send money for education and investing maybe, but am always told that the money is used for designer clothes and shoes most of the time. My brother always carries a wad of cash in a money clip, he has a $100 bill on the outside, but the rest is all $1, it's all for show. He has no money and lives with my parents. That's actually funny because wealthy people put the ones on the outside and the big bills on the inside. I'm poor and still put my big bills on the inside bc I don't wanna get robbed for the little I have mayo. This, my father always told me small bills on the outside. Don't want people to know you are carrying a lot of cash. That also sounds like a great way to get mugged. It's generally good advice if you have a lot of money to keep your wealth secret or at least ambiguous else people try to take advantage of you. Most wealthy people follow that rule, or they learn it pretty quickly. So anyone trying to show wealth is either new to it or showing more than they have. Posting selfies posed with things that aren't yours. I know someone who keeps posting pics of her wearing wedding dresses that she isn't getting with captions like new ope. Not this one. Still no. Despite the fact that she already found her dress. Does that count? OML that's insufferable haha. I thought you were going to say despite the fact that she's not even close to getting married. Let alone hasn't been in a relationship for years. Can I direct you to my ex? Who used to take pics with my kind of expensive accessories that I bought for myself way before I met him? That Louis bag isn't really yours darling. It's mine. And you just look dumb. My ex rented a Porsche and flexed it on his Instagram. Made me wish I could have broken up with him a second time. <laughs> Rental rims. Hold up. Are you telling me people rent rims for their cars? Why in the absolute F would a person do that? I used to work in a bank processing debit claim claims and that was first time I saw someone buying rental rims. I immediately ask my co-workers how the F can you rent rims? There's a place in Killeen. TX that you can rent tires from. F I'm tire rentals. I'm sure they have them elsewhere too. But still. Blew my mind. I used to live in a trailer park and a surprising amount of neighbors had luxury cars. Mercedes, Lexus, BMW etc. I remember reading an article one time about a family where dad worked and mom stayed at home with their kids. Dad drove a Mercedes. Mom drove a van. They lived in an ice house. But then dad lost his job and they had to downsize. They moved into a much smaller apartment to eliminate their mortgage. Did something with the van BC they were still paying on it, but kept the Benz BC it was totally paid off. So I guess it made sense. The woman who wrote the article said she felt ashamed to show up for benefits in a Benz but it wasn't how it looked. I have a relatively poor friend who doesn't have a TV or anything. But they go around in a several hundred pound tracksuit and wear fake diamond rings they bought on Wish, which he tells people are real. I didn't think it was possible to condense so much British chav into one comment. It's time to play chav or slav. I was trying to figure out why a super heavy tracksuit, like a weighted vest, was a sign of wealth. 
then I realized it probably referred to the currency of British pounds. Not wait. Everyone knows the pause can't carry 100 pounds. Following constantly posting stupid entrepreneurs on Instagram. Posts pictures of their cubicle and grinding or let's get this bread. The first insurance company I worked for was American Income Life. They don't have cubicles, but they constantly talk about how much money they made that week. Call each other stud, use the fire emoji endlessly, and hashtag things like hustle and mindset. It's exhausting. The entrepreneur guy that swears all the time because he's so real. Or the sales guy with the pig nose that is usually on a walk through the neighborhood. Guy also says on people for having regular jobs, wears poor fitting suits, and typically spouts misogynistic crap when women are uncomfortable with his pushy behavior. Just saw three expensive looking cars with tires smoother than a beach ball. Is it poverty or is it drag radials? Taking pictures in a fake luxury airplane. A buddy of mine went to pretty high end clubs. There was this Instagram dude constantly shooting pictures with empty expensive bottles that either he requested at the bar, or took off the tables. I can't imagine how much of a joke your life has become at that point lol. Not related to OP but thought worth a share. I work at a large campus for a company and on that campus there was a storeroom that held spare parts used for process equipment in the various labs etc. The manager of this building was always taking about how he had gone to buzzes or whatever the past weekend and had bottle service etc. I always thought to myself how the hell does this guy afford this. Turns out he had made a series of fake companies and was issuing spare parts to these fake companies them invoicing the parent company that owned the campus. Years later during an audit people realized we were paying for items that didn't actually exist on campus. Guys now in federal prison for many many years. Any Instagram influencer, really, for the most part, if you're rich, you appreciate your privacy because your money has drawn more attention than you want. If you have to scrabble after attention it's because people aren't already giving it to you on your own merits. Most of these are old money new money distinctions. And this is no different but you don't see many wealthy people plastering their private lives all over social media. Money speaks, but wealth whispers. Asking people on Facebook to get in on your Herbalife scheme. Bragging about how you're going to get rich from crypto but you keep talking about a different coin every week. It blows my mind that people can't see Herbalife is a pyramid scheme. Makes me think I should just start an online course on how to sell online courses instead of being the dumbass actually doing work to survive. Used to work at a 7 stroke 11. Once a month for a week this guy would come in with a rented green Cadillac and a very obvious prostitute on his arm. Would flash a wad of money while in the store and make it very specific that he wants $10 on that green Cadillac right there. Co-worker told me he does it with his SSI check. Who did he think he was impressing pumping $10 worth of gas? He's probably filling it just enough to return the rental without having to pay refueling fees or mayo. Once a month for a week. Bragging about how much money you have. Clothes and accessories with huge logos on them. Posting pictures of new items you purchased on Instagram and stuff. Especially cause the brands that actually impress rich folks are the ones the rest of us have never even heard of. If I ended up super wealthy, doubtful, I'd love to have a decently nice house and travel a lot. But I hope I still wouldn't care about having high-end brands or impressing people. I'm already rich and can do what I want. Who cares who's impressed? The huge logo thing is funny to me. I remember when the polo shirts with the huge polo guy logo came out and thought about how tacky it looked. It used to be a nice little subtle accent on the shirt. Plenty of other brands have gone this way too from being a nice product with a subtle or small logo that people who knew what it was would notice. Now it's about making the logo huge so that's all you see. So all those brands have tearing. Anything that is big or in your face is pretty much the lowest tier from a quality and style perspective. But will have the biggest markup. They use these to subsidize the more exclusive lines of clothing. And laugh at the pause. Live in Alaska. You have no idea who has money and who doesn't here. Well, like if they've got a Hughes craft. That's some indication. Me. Telling people I own Bitcoin. But conveniently not mentioning that I only own 0.002 BTC. Same but 0.00054 BTC. Lifts pinky eye to am a 10,000 there. Bragging about wealth or high paying jobs. Most of the rich people I've known in my life were actually quite quiet and secretive about their wealth. Some guy who keeps asking me out is exactly like this. 
He keeps alluding that he's rich but he's obviously not. He's a real estate agent and I'm sure he makes a good enough living. But trying to flaunt it like he doesn't is irritating. I've dated a guy, and am still friends with, whose dad owns an international company that's been exceedingly profitable. I literally wouldn't have known the extent of their wealth had I not been to his dad's house. Otherwise he's super down to earth. Bingo. My grandma is easily the richest person I know and she drives a used Toyota. Lives in an old and cheap neighborhood. Shops at the cheap grocery store. Wears really simple clothing clothing. And only eats out when she goes to her favorite breakfast joint where she gets the early bird special for $4.50. She definitely spends money elsewhere. Taking the family on nice vacations. Paying for everyone's education. Donating lots of money to her favorite charities. But her day to day life is very simple. You'd never know how wealthy she is. I know quite a few wealthy families and they all do this none of them give a sh about being flashy. They all care about living a normal life and only buying high quality items. My dad taught me the best way to build wealth is to not spend money you don't need to. My dad is a radiologist and was one for 30 plus years in a city where there was only one radiology department and one hospital. My entire life growing up, I had no idea that we were wealthy. For a couple of years, we lived in a rental house. And we didn't have anything extravagant no one in my family got an iPhone until it was popular and therefore cheaper. Same with Blu-ray and plasma TVs. I thought we were middle class my entire life. The only thing was we had a huge yard. Until I was in high school and one of my teachers said that my family was rich. Had me questioning my family's financial status honestly. But I'm glad my dad never flaunted his wealth. Not gonna lie. Without knowing any context. A teacher bringing that up feels slightly effed. You see a lot of this on the west coast urban centers. Seattle. San Francisco. ETC. People who would be wealthy anywhere else in America. But live like middle class people because housing inflation. Self conscious about it. Even. I'm doing well. But I make damn sure to avoid the subject. Except for. You know. Here. Rubbing your good fortune in people's faces is beyond rude, and that includes ostentatious displays of wealth. In Norway there's always a three-week celebration when finishing high school, culminating in a parade on our national holiday. All cities and town host parades that day. In this parade the HS seniors often use old cars and vans which they paint, decorate and mount stereos on. Usually 3-6 student come together and split the cost. Bear in mind the only thing required of these vans is to manage running for those three weeks. All in good fun. Now in the big cities, there is a tradition for students to acquire buses. Buses with a full-time hired driver so everyone can drink. Always. And they mount them with top-notch speaker systems on the roof. Rented. And host parties. Every year they interview some of these kids and have them reveal what this madness costs. Usually it's about 30-40k per head when all expenses are paid. Daddy pays OFC. Now you'd think these are the rich kids. Bits it's not. It's the kids of those who want to look rich. People who have mortgages to the sky buying a house in rich adjacent neighborhoods. Rich kids don't bother flashing fancy buses in public. They host private parties amongst themselves. People who show off stacks of cash on pictures instead of depositing it into a bank account. An expensive. Current year model car. Parked in front of a low-income apartment complex. On an 80-month loan with 12% April. I have an 84-month loan but it's at 0%. I mean f if you just gonna give the use of your money away like that. My cousin financed a brand new car. 2019 Chevy Trax. Shortly after I financed my much nicer, likely used car. 2016 Lexus RX 350. The loan amounts were within 5% of each other. And both were 6 year loans. I have good credit. He has garbage credit. His payments are more than double mine. When I'm done. I'll pay a couple grand in interest. If that. When he's done. He'll have spent enough to buy 2 or 3 new cars. Forget ya neck. Protect ya credit. I live in some cheap. Crappy apartments. There's some dude whose window blinds are all messed up and broken. And the inside of his apartment is disgusting and there's crap everywhere. He drives a brand new Audi crossover and parks half in the motorcycle parking and half in the handicap parking. My favorite moment at my old complex was seeing the BMW of my terrible neighbor, very young, parties all night multiple times a week, etc. Getting repossessed, they were kicked out soon after, 
Oopsies. I used to walk through a lot of trailer parks for my job and the amount of times I saw a brand new Challenger or Charger sitting parked by one is not an insignificant number. Driving an old Maserati you bought a few months ago, only to sell it in a few weeks. BC you're too poor for the repairs. A guy tried to pick me up in a bar once by flexing his Maserati, practically begging me to go outside and check it out. I'm into cars and was ready for a smoke. So I grabbed a buddy safety first and all and went with him to check this beast out. It was a LeBaron with a body kit. Maybe it was the booze or maybe it was because he thought people believed this was the real deal. But I laughed so hard I almost peed myself. It wasn't even a well done kit looked janky af like the paint job was courtesy of my buddy's garage. Actually, it was probably a legitimate Maserati. I have a buddy that's a car guy and he's into old Chryslers. Maserati and Chrysler made a car together and I believe it had Maserati logos but looked like a LeBaron. Still laughable this guy was trying to say I drive Maserati as I don't think. Even knew. These were very expensive. What we used to call a Brooklyn bank account. Simultaneously wearing every single piece of jewelry you own. Anything that reads hustle, loyalty, respect. Women who post a bit too often about how great it is to be your own boss and be living a plush life and here are pictures of me by a pool wearing a sparkly swimsuit and you too can be rich. Set your own hours, travel, and get to lounge by pools if only you sign up with this definitely not a pyramid scheme company. Bonus points for having a glass of wine in the shot and forgetting to move the box it came in out of the shot, thus ruining the illusion that it was expensive wine. Honestly, anyone that feels the need to openly display how much money they have, by flexing designer clothes, talking about their income, showing off their car, etc., it just screams insecurity. Aside from maybe a few outliers, the only people who do this are poor or kids spending their parents' money, kids spending their parents' money, when I see that they're young, this is always what I think lol. Posting money related quotes on social media. Buying baby Burberry or Gucci clothes. Just stupid. I work in retail and see it all the time. I've been saving since I got pregnant for these baby shoes etc. As much as some of these examples are based on shtai choices, there's also the fact that the poorer people get, the less stake they have in any kind of future or long term thinking. That's not a critique of their intellect. It's just their reality that they're never going to be able to travel, own a home. Any of the basic aspirations that used to be drilled into people as options if they worked hard. So where I might see a big TV as something that'd be nice, but I don't need one right now. They see that as being as good as life gets. Watching bullshit increasingly higher definition. Because poverty doesn't have room for long term gratification. A $3000 stereo and $3000 rims on a pose beat a car. Fun fact. Drug dealers and gang members spend their cash on that kind of shon purpose. They do it for a number of reasons. Namely because they can't use banks, leaves a trail and opens you up to audits police scrutiny. Large piles of cash get stolen or taken by police. And possessions like jewelry and rims can be pawned in case of emergency. Police don't need a warrant to take large sums of cash. But they do need one to take unrelated items like jewelry, rims, and stereos. Even if they're all but sure said items were obtained with illegal funds. For example, if they take a gang member in for suspected murder, they couldn't take the jewelry in his home or the crap in his car without a reason. He can keep his mouth shut, pawn things, and hire a lawyer with cash. Women before separate bank accounts did this with things like jewelry and fancy dresses the moment you need to get out of dodge you sell it all and take the cash. This is where the magpie trope came from people who never understood it wasn't hoarding anything shiny but rather life insurance in case she went south. I worked a min wage job for a long time and it was crazy to me how many of my co-workers always had the newest iPhone, an expensive Starbucks drink twice a day, and obviously expensive clothes, hair, and makeup. It just all went on credit. However, it is ridiculously expensive to live where I am. 1 million for a 1,000 square foot home built in the 1980s level expensive, and I think the apathy over knowing they will never own a home no matter how hard they work and save leads people to simply buy what gives them that rush of dopamine and makes their day to day life more enjoyable. Rent is also super expensive here, about $1,500 a month for a 1 bedroom 500 square foot place, 
It's hard to blame people for spending the little bit of money they have left over at the end of the month on fun things rather than saving it. Couple that with the fact that a lot of assistance programs have limitations on income and savings to qualify, and you are disincentive to try to get to a better place. I want to save up a few thousand dollars so if a medical bill comes up or my car dies I can actually fix it. But if I have more than $1,000 in the bank I'll lose my income of $400 mo. Basically they get penalized for being responsible and trying to get to the point that they can actually get off the assistance programs. This right here is a huge reason you see so much extravagant spending on non-essentials by the very low income. They have to spend it right now or they screw themselves over. I literally have no more room to store food and toiletries. But I still have this $1000 from my taxes I need to spend by the end of the month. I guess we're getting that latest iPhone after all. And this is why people say the way our system is set up is to keep people poor. This is what they mean here. Making 45k a year but getting a truck that's 40k off the lot. When my sister and I were little we would unplug the receiver of the phone, take it outside, and pretend to talk on it. The hope was that someone would see us and think we had one of those newfangled cordless phones and be jealous. Blatant displays of trihead wealth in the form of ostentatious brand names, flashy accessories, etc. A couple of genuinely rich people I know keep it very low key. They have money and stuff like property. Don't flaunt their wealth in your face. And often look dressed like Joe Average from the suburbs. For British people holidays to Dubai. Often the same price as going to Spain but somehow seen as flashy and aspirational despite being a miserable hole built on slavery. I don't get the attraction. There's nothing to do there except spend money. I don't understand how anybody goes there and has fun that isn't loaded. I've stopped there on the way to Europe from Australia and next time I'll just stay in the airport. Just a big shopping mall on lots of sand. If you want to see real Arab culture, go to North Africa, Jordan or Lebanon. When your car is completely pimped but your house has a tarp on the roof and 18 inch grass in the lawn. Spending half your paycheck on a pair of Yeezys. Honestly, the entire sneaker head thing never made sense to me. I knew a guy in college who only ate ramen and cereal to afford his fancy sneaker collection. And not a single human being on campus was impressed. He spent 4 grand on one pair. Bro, you have student debt you could have spent that on. Gucci belt buckle on them raggedy Aros jeans you sag just so everyone can see the belt. Too many times I clean up after evictions and there is empty bottles of Grey Goose, Hennessy, expensive clothes, shiz, many things that if they just bought cheaper stuff or nothing at all they would have been able to pay the rent. If I work the extra hours, it will bump me into the next tax bracket and I'll make less because of higher tax. Credit cards that you use to pay off your other credit cards. Not entirely sure if this belongs here, but here goes. I work as a host in a small restaurant with average prices, 10-15 a plate, plus drinks, etc. Yesterday, two middle-aged women with generic Karen haircuts pulled up in a new Mercedes, came in, and immediately became outraged that we had a waiting list, due to being understaffed in the middle of a lunch rush. I offered to put them on the list, and one of them pulls out her credit card, shows it to me, and assertively says okay, are you going to seat us now? I assumed that she had one of those limitless cards, which I literally couldn't care less about, and told her that it didn't matter, and she'd just have to wait. They went and stood outside, even though we had set up chairs so people could sit while they wait, and glared at me the entire time. They kept coming in and asking why I couldn't seat them, which I answered with the truthful answer of being terribly understaffed, as two servers and a cook had been injured in a car accident that morning. They're fine, no major injuries, but the car was totaled. Eventually, after a 20 minute wait, I call them and seat them on the patio, and they proceed to order about $80 worth of food and drinks, going so far as to pour their first round of Bloody Marys onto the ground just to prove to the unfortunate people around them that they didn't care about the cost of their food. Then, when they were given their bill, they wait until the server goes back inside, and they run out of the patio gate hop in their car, and drive away without paying. Unfortunately for them, Karen had decided to back into her parking space out front, with her license plate clearly visible to the outside security camera. A police report was then immediately filed by my manager. It was a good day. TLDR. 
a couple of Karens drove up to my restaurant in a new car, flashed their credit cards at us, wasted food to prove how little they cared about money, drove away without paying their bill, and are now most likely in jail.